This program is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk. Welcome back. Champions League pool here for you on Free Sports 2. Feastly games that we've had so far. Fantastic performances. And we have our two breakaway leaders. Great start from Rob Warren and Josh Kane, who both have a win to their name. They'll play in the game after the one coming up here as Martin McIntosh and Jimmy Croxton go head to head. It's worth pointing out, so I'm first time I've mentioned it so far in the show today should there be a finish level on points we don't take frames for and against that's just for us really just to just to keep a monitor off if we're tied we go to a shootout but goodness me is it a shootout with a difference yeah something new um, there's one thing that's for, for sure that uh, the organizers are going to continue uh, to try all new things and to try and add uh, different dynamics and, and to determine a, a tied group tonight will be a six red challenge it'll be a race to see who can pot six reds the quickest um, whether that's two or three or four people playing in that um, and the quickest th will, will go through so uh, i'm sure at some point during the eight groups we will get to see that and it'll be very exciting when we do it, it's just slowly turning into the generation game. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Our third match is upon us then. It's Martin McIntosh against Jimmy Croxton. We can head out into the arena where the balls are racked. And Martin, Martin will be McIntosh breaking break. first in this one. Time running. Goes without saying, a very important match for both players because my quick maths tell me that if whichever player loses this match or other player loses this match they cannot go through it's essentially an eliminator isn't it yeah reds in play obviously draws and other results can come into play but you can absolutely not afford to lose this game both players know that which adds a real interesting dynamic to this fixture First opportunity then to Jimmy Croxton, and it's a decent one. He had a couple of opportunities in that uh, previous match that he's just finished, uh, which he didn't manage to take. And the chances he did have, it was always a problem ball somewhere that he wasn't able to work out, or in working it out, he created another problem. So he'll be annoyed not to take the chances he got. So he'll be pleased, or he'll be keen to start this match with a reverse dish to. You know, just remind himself he's still here and he's still playing well. Has to be careful when he plays this plant that the red he's hitting doesn't get behind the yellow and, and is blocked to the pocket. Played well. No problems with position, just get the white into the... Open table, simple black to get it on the board. Yeah, I guess from Jimmy's perspective, he just has to play the table as if he's never really been away. Didn't do an awful lot Frame. wrong against Josh Kane, really, was just wiped away. And that, that can absolutely happen in a match this short a format. Yeah, you're going to get a couple of chances. Your opponent's going to get a couple of chances. If, if your opponent takes them and you don't, you're going to lose. And you don't have to necessarily have to do a lot wrong. Well, we said this was a... Uh, stacked tournament Simon. let's take a look at the opening four groups these opening four will make up our first quarter final group but more on that as we go through the tournament some some good names in there to say the least you know you likes of Aaron Davis uh, Phil Harrison Jordan Shepard take your pick there's some great matches up there yeah there's going to be as we go through this we're going to see some of the all-time greats Phil Harrison will be in that category in terms of shootout Paul Jordan Shepard he's one of the most exciting players on the planet five uh, shootout titles I think he has to his name now he, he really is um, absolutely box off when it comes to uh, shootout Paul he's obviously won many other tournaments as well Aaron Davis uh, 
world championship runner-up. They'll probably be the highlights of the next three weeks' groups, but the other players in those groups are also fantastic players, and they'll be very competitive groups. If Jimmy can get his break going... Stop the clock, please. He'll really back himself here. He's asked, I think, for the white ball to be cleaned, which indicates that he thinks he's getting a slightly iffy connection, maybe. I'm, I'm not too sure. Maybe he dumped a load of chalk on it off that break. Not too clear as to why, but one thing that is for certain is the break is something that's giving him a little bit of strife. Yeah, he's had three breaks so far tonight and they've they've all gone badly. He's almost potted the white in that right centre pocket all three times. Once he did, and twice he's been very close. Time running. Um, so, so far he's not catching that break cleanly. And this time he thinks he's had a poor contact on that front ball and uh, that's why he's had it clean. But it's uh, a really horrible split. Yeah, no surprise to see him hand the table over there. Yeah, hands the table over, and it's it's still an open table, of course. No no colours are assigned on the break. Martin in methodical mood. Wanted to hide the white behind the yellow, but he has left a, a shot at the red. So will Jimmy take reds now and, and get to work on that colour set? He didn't want them first time round, he won't. Well, he couldn't get to them first time round. Oh, is he going to be unlucky? Red no. Balls in play. So reds is the colour set for Jimmy Croxton. It was a really good idea, this. It didn't quite work as intended. Yeah, that's gone poorly, really. And we see a tactical shot from Jimmy just playing his red onto the yellow because a yellow came down over both bottom corner pockets, blocking off those reds. So he plays red onto yellow, hands the table over to Martin. He's done that as a, a sort of calculated gamble. He's done that knowing he was going to give Martin a, a shot in terms of a pot on, but he knows the yellows and the black at the bottom of the table are awkward. almost brilliant and it's just awkward you can see by his reaction I'm not sure he's on this yellow to the bottom right corner and the black's just tied up against the red and he's having to swerve this that was so close to being perfect half a roll to the left and he makes the clearance Jimmy can make the plant on the two reds to the bottom right hand corner and I think the red next to the black will pot if he gets the right angle on it so a chance for Jimmy well the fact that he's played into the red and black tells me that that red didn't pot so a nice little cannon opens that up position slightly although I think it was he was always putting the white here so he's accepting a difficult pot has to play this quite dead weight as well to hold the white that's what played not perfect pressure on this black chance for a 2-0 lead though plenty of incentive perfectly played on the 8 ball Frame. from Jimmy Croxton who goes 2-zip into the lead big big frame this next one for Martin McIntosh in particular who needs to get himself on the board and in the mix in this one We've already seen groups one to four. Let's take a look at groups five to eight. There are some serious, serious names in this competition. We've, we've seen so many of these players already in shootouts recently, like Sean Story, Dave McMara, frequent players familiar on the circuit. But your big names there. 
Chris Melling, Mick Hill. That is as good as it gets. Yeah, this the, the Chris Melling and Mick Hill are probably the reason I'm as so ex excited as I am to, to be commentating on this uh, brilliant event. Um, uh, Chris Melling is a fantastic player of multiple codes of the game. He's played snooker, been a professional snooker player, Chinese eight ball, English eight ball, American eight ball, nine ball, been a Moscone Cup player. He really is, uh, you know, he plays all the different codes and to be able to do that takes some serious skill. He's one of the most talented um, cube uh, sports players I've ever seen. Uh, and Mick Hill probably comes in as is one of the greatest ever winning machines in, in English eight ball. He is one of the absolute greats of the game. I think he's up to six world titles now, which is absolutely phenomenal. And um, I have to say, uh, looking at the groups, I would say that Mick's probably got the hardest group of the whole draw. I think uh, Dylan Leary, Shane Thompson and Liam White is going to be a real handful for Mick Hill. Um, so we probably are saving the hardest group till last, although frame all the groups three. are going to be really tough Martin to call. Martin to break. Trailing two yeah, frames. It's nice to have a group of death. Time running. Yeah. Can't have a tournament without having a group of death, can you? Important ball to make there for Martin McIntosh. Keeps him at the table. Might just keep him alive in this tournament. Needed that one. This frame's a real key one. The difference between 2-1 and 3-0 is absolutely ginormous in this instance right now. Martin needs this. He may have to accept yellow by the black up to the top left hand corner rather than the simple shot into the middle I don't know whether he can get on another ball from this yellow to the left pocket left corner uh, left center pocket now and I think he was playing for that yellow and he's come back too far so he's put himself in a bit of bother here I don't think he's on a pot extension called Cushion first, trying to pot this in the centre pocket. This is tough. Brilliant. What a Brilliant shot. shot. What a shot under the thumb from Martin McIntosh. He needed this. And that's a player that's experienced at this version of the game, as in shootout rules. Had to, took his time, didn't rush it, didn't get annoyed, come up with a brilliant shot and completes the clearance. Fantastic from Martin McIntosh. <laughs> That's so good from Martin. He's had to play so many of those shots under the cosh in so many different scenarios, often for a lot of money. The pressure does not phase him. It's so easy in that situation. He's played a really loose positional shot, not landed on his next ball, to come in and, and rush the shot and get annoyed, especially at 20 seconds his shot. But I think he used his extension as well, took his time, worked it out, and then executed to perfection. Um, he doesn't look happy about it, but he, I'm sure he is. New venue looking absolutely resplendent here at the Players Club. It's uh, been used a, a couple of times before, I believe, we were told by Lee Kendall, the club's owner, but it's it's been revamped and reshaped and a lot added to it for this event to, to give it that extra sort of X factor and it, it really does look the business, doesn't it? It sort of reminds me of a sort of Only Fools and Horses sketch that uh, it's been revamped so much that you can argue it's not the same arena anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> I don't think he's going to get any awards from the council for it. <laughs> That's, uh, just shows you how crazy this game is. That's probably the best contact on the break that uh, Jimmy's had, although he still didn't control the white particularly well. Look at white was close to that centre pocket again, but he comes up dry. A couple of those poor breaks that he had, he actually made a ball and had opportunities off it. That can be all it takes. That's in play. That was a tough shot Martin took on there. I'm just trying to see where his next red is. I think he's okay. Yeah, you can just squeeze this bite. If he can get hold of this white, it's a good chance. At the moment, the white's just getting away from him. Not sure if either of these balls go into the centre pocket. 
He's having to come down the table. This is tough. Brilliant. He's just starting to feel it, I think, isn't he? Yeah, slight grimace as he wanted a nice easy angle to get onto his next ball. If he's if he's straight on this, then there's not a lot he can do. Yeah, so much so he's going you know, going uh, away from the two at the top. He's still struggling with a bit of angle here. I don't think he's got a lot of wiggle room on this one. Just that enough. Oh, he's controlled that well. Oh, and you can see the how annoyed he is. Changed his mind on the shot. You could see that he was queuing up at the top of the ball and then, or the bottom of the ball, and then changed to the top. And he's left himself really awkward on this last red. Oh, he's lucky. It's squeezed in off the yellow. Perfect cue ball control, though. Well, we've got a game on our hands, haven't we? We've got a real game on our hands. Oh, no! No, no, no. Don't hit your cue, Martin. Simon will be cross. He's fuming, and to be fair, quite rightly, that's a sitter. I'm not sure how he's missed this. This is, uh, yeah, it's just incredible. I know he's awkward queuing with the hand in, in amongst those yellows, but you know he, he could line that up a hundred times. He's not going to miss it. Just uh, a very strange one. And I mean, that could be the difference in this match. I mean, Jimmy should clear these up, three-one up rather than two-two. That is absolutely massive. Incredible. Looked the business in the last two frames, Martin McIntosh. To miss that shot. Criminal. And he knows it. Yeah, he doesn't need to be told. He's sat there, he knows it. He knows he's sitting there thinking he's going 3-1 behind and he's got it all to do, especially having lost his opening match. It wasn't just the fact that it was going 2-2. He was going 2-2 and he had the momentum and it was his break as well. He is sat there seething. Jimmy doing what he has to do, making sure perfect position throughout. Jimmy's gone about these in a measured and professional manner. But he will have resigned himself to losing this frame when Martin was lining up that eight ball. He was even tapping the table. He was applauding Martin for his couple of the shots he played. And yeah, it's... Uh, well, he'd be happy, wouldn't he? would be happy to be going in front or going further in front. Jimmy using the full shot clock. Frame. And takes it out. 3-1 then to Jimmy Croxton. He's one frame away. Just wonder if there's a little bit of clock management there from Jimmy. Just to chew up a little bit of time. Should he be required to use a little bit of that shot clock in later frames? Not quite sure what Jimmy's just said to, him, to Martin McIntosh there, but two players enjoying a little bit of a uh, banter about it. Sure, he's blaming that Q, Simon. Oh, it's definitely the Q's fault for sure. That Q's played that shot a few <laughs> times. <laughs> the Q knows how to miss a black. That's for sure. That is, uh, yeah. But you could tell the players were talking about the, the hampered queuing he has there, and I mean, you, you can see the disbelief. He just can't believe he's missed it, even with the awkward queuing. There's still time in this set, though. That's the thing. Um, I know that. You know, Jimmy probably was doing a bit of clock management, but there is still enough time in this match Martin for Martin to get back Having into three it. Three frames to one. Time running. 
There really is. Golden break, not this time. The closest we've seen so far. The black goes in off the break. You win the frame. Black and white, you lose the frame. Not the greatest lead, though. Good break. Decent split. Not got a great first opportunity. Yeah, that was difficult to cut that back. That was really, really fine. Difficult shot. And Jimmy's got a chance to go and win the match and keep himself in the tournament. Yellow's in play. No damage done with that cannon. He wanted to go by the yellow, I think. But yellow still passes the red to the corner, which is the important bit. Whenever you play pace into centre pockets, you are asking for trouble. And that's what's happened here. It's very harsh to say that the positional shot he played previously was the hard or the bit that's cost him. But he's had to pinch the pocket there to be able to avoid the yellow in screwing back out. And in pinching the pocket and playing it with firm, it's bounced now. It can happen. And it always, always makes the player who played it look a right mug in the process. It's, in theory, there's nothing wrong with the shot. If he plays it at less pace, it goes in. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. But at that pace, I think, you, I think the phrase you used was absolutely spot on, Simon. You are asking for trouble. And he knew, he knew that as well, but you, you've got no choice but to play it because he has to get the white to where he got was trying to get the white to. So he had to play it with pace. He just pinched a, a fraction too much. Martin's still got to finish these off and he hasn't worked these out particularly well. He's left an awkward ball last and the black is difficult to get on from where he is now. He may drop this in and just uh, play the double on the black. Oh, he's missed the ball anyway. Got to drop it in first though, yeah. Those are the situations where I think Martin could just improve. He could probably get to a position where He's not having to play his hardest ball down the rail with black for a double, say. Um, as he improves and get better, you know, he probably would find a way to be slightly better on his last ball in finishes like that. And that could be Martin McIntosh out the tournament. It should be at this stage. Jimmy should take these down. No doubt in my mind here. It's not ideal. That's far from kind, yeah. But it's recoverable. You can see he can still get through to the pot angle of this yellow. And he can get to the centre of the white, so he's got options. He can play this a few different ways. With the black being near the side cushion at the top of the table, it's important to leave a good angle on the last yellow just to be able to drift behind the black. You want to make that black as simple as possible. Two shots away from eliminating Martin McIntosh, who will play his third match tonight. It will essentially be nothing more than a rubber game for Mad Mac. Jimmy Croxton, chance to keep his qualification hopes alive. Never in doubt, was it? Match. Jimmy, Jimmy Croxton, Croxton takes the win. Two points to his total. He joins the leaders at the top of the group table. Pretty good stuff from Jimmy. Started the match really strongly. Really good uh, finish from the break to start the match. And then the rest of the match was more about Martin not taking his opportunities than it was Jimmy. Jimmy kind of mopped up when he had to and uh, deserved winner. And he's um, back in, the, uh, in with the hunt, really, in with a chance of winning this group. Yeah, and a really, really good game coming up as well. It's Warren versus Kane. The two leaders go toe-to-toe -to -toe when we come back. This programme is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk.